Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Headshot720 here, coming at you live on Gallman Railway. And today, I am asking the question, can Microsoft redeem themselves at Gamescom 2014? And you guys are probably thinking, oh, Microsoft has already redeemed themselves since uh, E3 uh, 2014. 14 and 2013 was really bad but 2014 was better and the main thing that I'm saying is that Microsoft needs to show off the games most gamers that I know that I, I've talked to probably 15 people that have came over from Xbox 360 to PS4 because they don't want an Xbox One they do not want an overpriced $500 DVR and you're going to say, oh, they, they, they might have dropped down the price. But the thing is, is if you if when they take down that price point, you don't get the connect. And if you don't get the connect, you don't get any voice commands or nothing. So they pretty much screw you out of it. So it's pretty it's still 500 bucks, no matter which way you look at it. And, it's, and it is an overpriced DVR still. They, they said, that, oh, we're going to fix the, the 720 HD output. And we're gonna make sure, we're gonna turn off the applications that aren't running in the background, so the so the Xbox One can handle 1080p output. And we all know Microsoft; they're really slow. They don't really; they're kind of like slugs. But if they do do that, that'd be awesome. But it, it just goes to show that Microsoft has shown that they don't really care about gaming; they care more about having DVR and services and cable and this internet stuff and just a bunch of baloney. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, I would much rather prefer a gaming console over an overpriced DVR had gaming console bound in one with really low specs and stuff. I really don't think that's uh, worth it. And to be honest, I don't think Microsoft should have uh, done what they did because they pretty much screwed themselves over. And Microsoft's a pretty good company. I mean, they make PCs and stuff, but I do prefer Macintosh, but still, they're still a really good company. And no, I'm not a PlayStation fanboy. I don't like it. I don't know why people say that, but... Xbox 360 was pretty good. They had really good ex exclusive titles, but most of the titles on Xbox One are port overs, so there's nothing really to get there. You guys all like The Last of Us. I don't, but if you do like it, I mean, look, you can play The Last of Us. That's an exclusive. You can play Grand Turismo coming up soon. You can play Infamous Second Son. You can play Little Big Planet. You could play plenty of... I don't even know all of them. But anyway, most of the Xbox One titles are just port-overs. If you know what that is, just a multi-platform. And they don't optimize it for Xbox One because it just can't handle it. So they just... If, and if it is an Xbox One, most of the time it is, then it kind of screws the people on PlayStation because the PlayStation 4 can handle more, more graphic... Uh, more graphics of, like more powerful 1080p 60 frames per second and it has G, a GDDR5 RAM which is more it's more of a graphics card than a speed card so it's not as fast but the graphics are better because the higher the resolution the longer it takes and uh, Xbox One is DDDR3 there's no G in it G is for graphics it has DDDR3 and that is more of a speed rather than graphic card so that is just that's a killer right there and what that what does that mean for me and you that's on PlayStation 4 and if you're on Xbox one uh, what it means for people on PlayStation 4 is that the game m might be less optimized for the PlayStation 4 slash PC because they're pretty close right now uh, PC still better but they're still similar they have the similar speed specifications right now I'd say it's about high not ultra on PC so it's pretty good uh, so it, it kind of affects PC and PlayStation 4 gamers at once because Microsoft's a very 
large company. And if it's a small company making the game, like, uh, I don't know, just, I guess you could say Minecraft almost, but not Minecraft. A small company making a smaller company than, like, DICE or something, making a game for, uh, both consoles, it's kind of hard for them to optimize it for a certain console because they're so low on, uh, employees so it really makes it hard for everybody I mean, really everybody doesn't matter who you are and I've, I've talked to a lot of like I said uh, Xbox 360 gamers and they said they were just going to get a PS4 because they don't trust Microsoft now ever since E3 2013 if you don't remember that it was a train wreck but they don't trust them now and that's their choice Microsoft, that's just their personal preference. And people would say, oh, it's just uh, the, the Xbox One is just a more well-rounded console. And I guess, yes, you could say that. It's not meant for anything, really. It's just a well-rounded, like, PlayStation 4, it's mainly gaming. It's not meant for DVR cable services. So, that's what it's for. I mean, PlayStation 4 is just gaming. It's not for... DVR, it's not for cable, it's not for that kind of stuff. PlayStation, but PlayStation has clearly told us that it's for gaming, it's not for uh, cable. And I don't understand why Microsoft keeps coming out and saying, "Oh yeah, we're we're gonna try for the gamers now. We're gonna try. We we're just sorry about that." But they've already ruined it for themselves. They've already dug themselves in a five feet foot five foot hole. So I don't really know what uh, Microsoft is going to do now because their their fan base from Xbox 360, because there's still a lot of Xbox 360 gamers, don't get me wrong, and they don't want an Xbox One. They most of the time want a PS4, but some of them want Xbox One. And I did have somebody tell me that there is no difference at all with the PlayStation 4, vice versa, Xbox One. And I don't know if that person didn't watch E3 or didn't really know. They were un undereducated on it. I don't know. But there is differences. There's there, it just there's minute differences that really make a difference in a game. You can watch a side-by-side -side comparison of two games. And it's either one's darker than the other one, a little less graphical, or one's brighter than the other one. So it just really... The specifications you have in your console and I personally I'm not gonna I don't want to put my opinion into this too much but personally I think that I would not be trusting Microsoft with especially five hundred dollars in total for the entire system you can pay 400 bucks but you're not going to get the full, full experience that Microsoft wants you to have so I don't know if I would trust Microsoft now as it stands 2014 going to 2015 if I would completely trust them but if I wasn't orientated on gaming, I was more orientated on a thing that would be an ease of watching television. Because that's what the Xbox One is great at, having an ease of watching television. You just say what channel you want and it goes directly to it. And that's amazing. That's really cool. But I am... I just saw a new television coming out, and it's voice... Like, my, my TV is voice-operated, but I don't really use it much. Because it's kind of, uh... Not too great. But I saw a new Samsung television that's coming out, smart TV, that is completely voice-operated. So you can completely operate it with your voice. And that's not good for Microsoft, because why would you spend 500 bucks, another 500 bucks on a tele... Uh, on a gaming console... And then your TV already does it for you. So there's really no reason to get an Xbox One now if you had that television. But if you don't have that television, you don't have that kind of money. I think it was two grand, which is really not too bad. But if you didn't have that money, then I could totally see getting an Xbox One, which is 500 bucks though. So it's going to put you back 500 bucks. I, I have heard of problems with the voice command but it's not too bad I heard it's not too hampering you just gotta re say what you said and I know that the PlayStation 4 voice commands are terrible I don't use them I don't I, I've tried it before but they're just so bad that I just don't even use it 
And uh, I got this question off Twitter. I can't remember his uh, handle, but he should I said I should make a video on it. So here I am. So off of the Microsoft and PlayStation topic, uh, I was going to say that we are going to get Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare on August 19th. And then after that, we're going to maybe get Destiny. I'd probably give it a 50-50 chance on it. Somewhere around there. And then after that, we'll be getting Little Big Planet and, uh, excuse me, I know it's a little plugged, and, uh, Assassin's Creed. I just saw that the new trailer for Assassin's Creed Rogue, and a lot of people are enjoying it, so that's good. Very good. I also saw a Sims 4 gameplay. It came out, like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. The producers of the game. And people are very, very, very mad at the people that are currently making Sims. I have Sims 3. I play it just for fun. I just screw around. I don't really uh, play it hardcore. But I've heard uh, that now you can't drive around in cars. You just go to your destination now. And your Sims automatically get teleported there. And people are very, very frustrated that you cannot do that. Because... The, the gaming industry, so the people are so picky, but yeah, I, I don't really know what to say to uh, people, the people that make Sims. I mean, uh, it, this is the this is the problem with uh, gamers these days. If they change anything that to make the game run smoother or you know just to optimize the game more, people get mad and they take it personal. And they think that they're idiots and. But they can't handle every single request, guys. You have to imagine that. They can't handle every single person's request that plays the game. There's over 3 million players on Sims. And that's just on PC. And PCs is generally a little smaller uh, player count. That's just that's 3 million. That's a lot of people. And if they try to answer every single request that you have, they just can't do it. And for some reason, people think that they can't. I mean, I could see saying, oh, there's a bug in your game, you might want to fix it. That you should do it. Like, unlike DICE, they don't really listen to anybody unless you have an incredible amount of subscribers on YouTube. They ain't going to listen to you. And sometimes they don't even listen to them. So, like, I've, I've tried to get my point across about uh, how laggy Battlefield 4 is and how just just always lagging and phrase per second drop and they just and I've always getting error codes I'm getting a gray screens now I'm always getting an error code 37878 I'm getting a lost battle packs I'm getting lost connection to EA I'm getting all this crap but that's not having to do with the game that's having to do with how dice is fixing the bugs in their game and stuff like this stuff that the, it just normal protocol and they just can't do it and I have no idea why. I just think they need to fix it because I really have no intentions of getting Battlefield Hardline for multiplayer. I don't want to play Battlefield Hardline for the multiplayer. And I do agree that they should make it into a DLC or a discounted price for people that are premium that have paid over $100 for the game. And it's not worth $100. I'll give. I'll tell you that. It's not, not, it's not worth $100. And EA just totally just takes your money and runs. They don't care. So I, why don't I do the same? I ain't gonna get it. But if you do like Battle for Hardline, then go ahead and get it. But I ain't. It's a shame because I really like Battlefield, but it. I think ever since EA bought out Dice, it just really went downhill. But they've they've always been with Dice. I think ever since they started making more money, I think EA started to take more grasp of it, because premium and battle packs and XP boosts on PlayStation Store or Xbox Live Marketplace or Origin, it's just all for microtransactions. I mean, it's pay to win. It seems like it's drifting over to pay to win, and I really do not want to see that. And I did see a Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight video about uh, DLCs and all that. Crap, and I, I do agree with them. That is BS. 
But hey, I guess we can always discuss that in another video. I really do appreciate you guys watching this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, favorite, or a comment if you feel that generous. And this game is about to end, and this was a live commentary. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. And tell your friends about me. I, re I really do appreciate it. And until next video, guys, Headshot720 out.